<clears throat> yeah, man. Hey, how you doing? Doing great. How are you doing today? <laughs> I'm doing good. How, how you like my tie? The tie is, is it straight? That is the most gorgeous tie I think I have ever seen in my entire life. See? That is See, that's why she on the show today. <laughs> it doesn't get better looking than this. There you go, there you go. You ready to do this show, ma'am? Yes. I'm okay, sorry. okay. All right. Welcome to the Night Storms, and I'm YG Nightstorm, and every week we get a Night Storm letter from folks like you from around the country and in the local areas on issues that they got going on in their lives, and they get answers from us. And for today's honorary Night Storm, I want to welcome my special, special guest, Miss Jennifer Hodge. How you doing, ma'am? Good. Thank you so much for having me. It, you... This is it's a blessing. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I mean, I like her because she already talked about her brother's tie. It looked good, y'all. It looked good. Okay. All right, so ma'am, you, you ready to get into this letter? I am. Let's go. All right. And the Night Storm letter says this. It says, Dear Night Storms, you guys are awesome. And I love the fact that YG is not afraid to be open and honest about things that have happened in his life. We need more real people to tell the real truth about things so people can get the help they need. Well, thank you. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I say all of that because my brother has been having some trouble for a while. He battles depression and he got hooked on drugs bad a few years ago. We live in Forsyth County, Georgia, where the drug issue is becoming a problem for a lot of families. We have four overdose cases in April, and suicide is high among our teenagers. Hmm, okay. A lot of the issues are drug-related, and some of these kids come from rich families that live in mansions. It just goes to show that money and status cannot save your kid from the problems of life. I, we agree to that. We agree to that. 100%. Yeah. And it, it, it concludes, my family is not well off, but we are faithful that God will intervene. I've seen too many parents cry over the loss of their children through drug overdoses, and I know YG understands this pain because he lost his own son several years ago. I did. Please read my letter, and I hope this reaches people and businesses that will lend their services in helping families like mine save their loved ones. May God bless you and anyone willing to help. And this letter is from Pam, and she's coming from Cumming, Georgia. So, Pam, thank you uh, for your letter. And so, so, so Jennifer, let's let's talk about this. Um, Pam is obviously going through some things, and her family is not unique because it's a lot of families going through this this drug problem and especially and we're just going to focus locally on coming georgia out in forsyth county a lot has been happening and i honestly remember those cases in april of the overdoses and and children committing suicide because of depression and a lot of the time it was also drug related so ma'am uh can you kind of talk to pam a little bit about some things that you got going on and how you understand exactly what folks like Pam is going through. Pam, this is a tough one. Mm -hmm. Forsyth County, it's one of the wealthiest counties in this country. We're in mm -hmm. the top 20. Mm -hmm. um, drugs really, it follows the money. Yeah. It, that, that, that's been known for decades. Drugs mm -hmm. follow the money. Is it in Forsyth County? Yes, it is. Have we had a few overdoses? Certainly. Yeah. Suicide out of control. I, I, I even had no idea that suicides were so bad. Yeah. Getting help, so difficult yeah. now. And it used to be that, you know, you could, you could get in pretty easily. Mm -hmm. Right now, they're over, overcrowded. They don't have room. Mm -hmm. They want you to be paid up front. Mm -hmm. You know, just different scenarios. And um, as a realtor, and also as a as a mother of someone that suffered from addiction, mm -hmm. I know what you're feeling. And I, and and I realized a long time ago that people have got to stand up. They've got to start helping. Mm -hmm. I'm watching. I, I can tell you a little bit about my story. Um, my son was. 14 years old, 14 or 15 years old, mm -hmm. and he had his appendix taken out. Mm. He became addicted to the pain pills. 
Wow. And he was crying on the floor, mm -hmm. saying, Mom, please help, please he was, help. He was 14 at the time. He was 14 when he had this surgery, mm -hmm. and probably he was around 15 when he started to say, Mom, I've got a real a, a problem. Okay. And he's begging for help. Okay. And there was no help. Mm -hmm. And I'm screaming, looking for charities, looking for anybody that just do something. Mm -hmm. He's a minor. He's just a kid. Mm -hmm. And the answers just really weren't coming soon enough. Mm -hmm. The county did come by, and I'll tell you, this was their answer, and this was about six years ago. Uh, they came by the house, and they said, oh, well, let's take him first of all, make sure he's okay mm -hmm. at, at the hospital. So they did that. And then they ended up um, sending him to a place in middle Georgia. Okay. And it was almost like a rubber room. Mm -hmm. Robbie was 16, and there was this other child in there who was about 10 or 11 that mm -hmm. had mental issues. Mm -hmm. And he got out within seven days and said, oh, your son should be fine now. Here mm -hmm. he is. You know, that didn't work. My son was back on that floor, back crying for help. And um, it took me a while, but someone did help my son. Mm -hmm. And as a result of them helping, I, I said, I will give back till the day I die mm -hmm. because ultimately they've given me an additional five or six years with my son. Right. Um, what, the idea that we came up with mm -hmm. that, um, and this was in 2012. And this is you and your son. You yes, came up with an yes, idea because, because of someone, what had happened and someone, someone helped. Someone helped me. Uh -huh. They gave me my son back. I promised that mm -hmm. I would do whatever it takes to help someone else. So right. We were at Three Dimensional Life, which is an awesome place for young boys. It's in okay. Gainesville, Georgia. Okay. And um, sitting on the front porch, and I realized real estate real estate that's the answer that's where the money is because you're in real estate I'm in real estate okay mm -hmm. God also blessed me with that as well mm -hmm. uh, it, it, as a single mom it was not going to be easy to go out on my own with right. three children mm -hmm. um, and God made me a number one realtor for several years mm. <laughs> several <laughs> years well you had a lot Todd, of motivation Todd, three babies and yeah, yeah. I did I, I had to support these children uh -huh. I, and it was my deal um, but I realized that through real estate transactions, if someone asked me for help, I could say, yes, mm -hmm. I'm here for you. Right. You're telling me that your child is suffering, and if I can help in any way, shape, or form, I, I'm going to do it. I right. mean, I have listed houses for free before, believe it or not. Really? To help people. Yeah, because it, whether it was the elderly, whatever. That's Wait a minute, what, let's make sure they heard that one more yeah. time, because in the realty <laughs> industry, yes. Especially when they talking about six or seven percent or higher yes. for a house, and you talking about I will list it for free. I have done. You that know, before. and and you can sometimes that six or seven percent can equal up to well, upwards of twenty five thousand dollars or more. Yes. And she did it for free. That is that is heartfelt. That's serious. But go ahead, ma'am. Continue. Right. I just want right. people to understand but, the sacrifice. But what I what I could do for my sacrifice is only half of that because each real estate transaction has two sides. There's a buyer, course, buyer and, and a seller. seller. Mm -hmm. But but if I could help somebody to help themselves and, and in need. And, and this lady, actually, she was elderly and she had no money. Mm -hmm. And this was her last bit of money that she was going to get from selling her home. And I said, don't worry, I got you covered. Wow. You know? So I, but, but I realized then you can help people through a real estate transaction. So Robbie and I, as we're sitting on the front porch of Three Dimensional Life, mm -hmm. I said, let's do it. Let's just do it. And, right. I, and I went to them, and at first they said, oh, you can't mix real estate with rehab. And I said, You can't mix real oh, estate with rehab. That's what they real told you. Real estate with rehab. Yeah, because the, that's because an odd combination. Time, it is an odd combination. But uh -huh. we as realtors, you know what? We see more than you guys see. Right, yeah. We're in and out of everybody's homes. We know True. our clients. Mm -hmm. And when we get together and we talk amongst ourselves, when we realize, Wow, we got a problem. We mm -hmm. got a serious problem. Mm -hmm. um, but so at first they said no, but I just kept saying hmm, something. Something's wrong here. Mm -hmm. So New Beginnings, a wonderful place for women in North Georgia. Okay. She asked me one day. She said, "Can you be uh, my realtor mm -hmm. in North Georgia?" And I said yes, but honestly, I have to be honest, I didn't mean it. Mm -hmm. They really didn't have any money. They were 100 miles away, and I couldn't do it. But 
God knew I had a heart still. Right, okay. All right, so within two months of her asking me and me saying yes, I had four mobile homes handed over to me at no cost. Okay. Which were then, I called her and said, oh, you don't need to go buy anything. I've got you something now. <laughs> wow. I've got you something. So four mobile homes. Four mobile homes, good, good shape. In good they shape, good great. condition, They're being, livable. They are being used today at uh -huh. New Beginnings. And as a result of those mobile homes, 89 women per year have a place to get well for recovery. Wait a minute, hold on. That's a fact. Hold That's on, fact. hold on, hold on. Yes. Wait a minute, they were 100 miles away. Yes. You didn't have any money. And Correct. At, and at first you said no, but then God opened up your heart, and then these four mobile homes <laughs> popped up, and at least 89 women a year. Now have a place now, to get now well have a place to get well because you, you put four to eight in within their four bedrooms each I believe or something. Uh -huh. and so and it's on a rotation basis mm -hmm. so it rotates people come in but they have a place to get well wow and wow. That, that God God did that wow. Jennifer Hodge did not have the power to do that but I was, but hold on Jennifer yes God did it but it also is a testament ma'am to your character. And, and your heart and, and your spirit and your faith of putting it out there and allowing God to use you to work through you because we have to be willing vessels, okay? And you did that and you were obedient to pop upstairs and, oh. and now through you, he's able to help 89 women per year who are going through some of the darkest times yeah. in their lives Yes. And if you if you go through something, you understand what darkness is, and to find help yes. is such a blessing. So I thank you for that. <laughs> thank you, so thank you. Okay, I mean, and that launched what but, you're doing with. But, and that and that did launch because the next year, Sharon Thompson, um, she nominated me um, for an award that. Mm -hmm. Uh, National Association of Realtors, realtors? Was looking okay. for realtors that have done things. Mm -hmm. Now this was kind of a fun thing too. Mm -hmm. So I actually ended up being one of five realtors chosen okay. in 2015 mm -hmm. for new ideas that they thought would be something one day. Really? One of five. Okay. And that was because of really mostly because of those mobile homes. And one but of five out one of North five, Georgia. No, 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 across the country. Across the country. Across the country. One of five one across of five. the country. And I remember they, they felt bad. They're like, Jennifer, I don't know why we're going for you because you haven't been doing this long enough. You mm -hmm. haven't been, but we're all being led for some reason yes, right. to yes, let right. you be one of the five. And, mm -hmm. that, and that was awesome. Wow. And that's all it took was I said somebody believes mm -hmm. that what I'm saying can work. Mm -hmm. So from that point on, mm -hmm. I said, we're doing it. We're going to do it. And so I decided on that it was going to be called Real, at first it was going to be called Real Tours for Rehab, but mm -hmm. I had to change that because Real Tours is a copyrighted word, right. which you can't use that. Um, so I changed it to Realty to open it up to anybody within the industry mm -hmm. could be a part of my plan. Realty for Realty rehab. Realty for rehab. And, and, okay. and rehab sometimes is not the most beautiful word or whatever, but it was the common denominator for mm -hmm. between real estate agents mm -hmm. and recovery. That's right. Because they called it rehab. Well, you know what? We rehab houses. So that's how we got its name, Realty for Rehab. Wow. Okay. <laughs> because I needed to bring the two together. Right. So I, I got that kind of up and going. And people said, well, how's it going to work? And I mm -hmm. said, well, this is the deal. I'm going to do 33% of the commission. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to let the buyer or seller choose where half of that 33% goes mm. so that they're never in that situation that I was in when I was sitting there going, how am I going to help my child? Uh -huh. I said, no, the buyer or seller gets to choose where half of it goes. Wow. And the other part really, had I'd never really decided, but I said, I know we need money mm -hmm. I, and, and I know that I'm good with it because I will help people with uh -huh. it. And so that's the way it started, the 33%. The 33. And that's okay. also um, the age, age Jesus of Jesus was, <laughs> Jesus when, he was when he passed away. Uh -huh. I and like those are the 33. So, yeah, that was really, that was where the 33 came from. Mm -hmm. It was like 33 of Jesus. That, 
And I said, I'm not, and because people said, can you budge on that? And I said, no, I'm sorry, I can't. 33, that's the number. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's how that number came about. Well, you know, I, I like that because, see, and if, and if I got to catch you up, for folks who don't know the significance of the age of Christ, you know, once Christ lived for 33 years and he passed away, he launched salvation for the entire world. Okay, once he passed away, he was resurrected three days and all that. He launched salvation and recovery uh, or a rehabilitation for everybody. And real, Realty for Rehab, well, Realty for Rehab is a recovery. It's a it rehabilitation is. for people. And that's the significance of that 33. And I like how you did that because folks need that recovery or that rehab and i know especially getting back to to pam in coming georgia and forsyth and she's talking about all the things that were going on and this is the reason why realty for rehab is so very very important because i think you you have a picture right here now can you pull that picture this over one? yes ma'am okay and can you Okay, and I know, forgive the light, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, but can you talk about what's going on in this picture right here? Well, um, this is what I did just recently to bring awareness to Forsyth County. Uh -huh. And I decided that it was time that somebody start speaking up and mm -hmm. saying, we're losing a lot of people. I felt it. Mm -hmm. I, I see it in, you know, friends calling every. We're losing a lot. So I yeah. started doing some research. Uh -huh. And I got teacups to represent the number of lives that we've lost wow. in, in, all of the in our area. Yeah, everyone represents a person. Each one has a name, date of birth, date of death. Um, and this is in and around our area, with the exception of maybe 15 of these, which now are my friend's children that are from across the country. Mm -hmm. That, um, But I'm telling you, that was like 230 teacups. Wait a minute, all of these are, are teacups, and it represents and, and, depths of... And it's not, that is not all just Forsyth County. What I was concentrating on mostly is the heroin triangle, mm -hmm. known as the little triangle above Atlanta mm -hmm. that is, that's is that been losing children for a long time. But these are a lot of babies. I mean, yeah, yeah Forsyth are babies. County and everything, but these are babies. They These are, are babies. babies gone. They are great kids. Mm -hmm. Because when, when you think of addiction and you think of how, uh, like Robbie Hodge, for instance, uh, that child was and that's a your child boy. That's of your boy. God. Mm -hmm. Yes. I mean, a big child of God. He walked in in God's righteousness, knowing the next right thing to do. Mm -hmm. He did not ever want to be addicted to pain pills. He didn't ask for it. Because um, he got addicted from the from after the, the surgery, surgery from the surgery, and he needed help. But mm -hmm. he never, he was too young. He didn't know. But you know, back then, you were shamed. We we shamed so many to death. Like mm -hmm. it's your fault, Robbie. It's all your. But it really wasn't. And, yeah. and now we realize that it is a disease. Mm -hmm. It does run in families. Yes. And um, Robbie was somewhat doomed. I had addiction on, to the left and addiction to the right mm -hmm. of Robbie's of Robbie's family line. Um, so, with these with these teacups, my my goal is that these people they're never shamed again because right. they didn't ask for it. I would like for them to be honored for the battle of mm -hmm. addiction that they fought so hard that. Big Pharma was behind. When you've got a pharmacy company telling doctors to prescribe certain pills because they knew it was going to make them rich, mm -hmm. and the doctors did it because either they weren't paying attention or they were making good money. A lot mm -hmm. of them got paid off quite well, mm -hmm. and it's all coming to light now. But I think about it and I go, my son was a victim of Big Pharma and what they did. Wow. The pain pills are just like... Ox, uh, the oxycontins, any mm -hmm. of the oxys, come from the poppy plant, mm -hmm. which is where heroin comes from. And heroin is the most addictive subject or uh, substance ever put on earth. Mm -hmm. So why in the world would we do a heroin, uh, you know, a pill, derive it from the most addictive thing on earth? Uh, big Pharma scored big on that. Well, I, 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 re I really want people to really pay attention to this. One, I want to bring this picture back first. 
and because of the loss of children, like I said, just not in Forsyth County, coming Georgia, but also this is representative nationwide. Okay, but just here in this small little area, over 200 babies, and you also was talking about your son, Robbie, and you, you got a picture of Robbie right here. Let, let's see this young man. Robbie Hodge was a... Court. Look at Robbie! <laughs> Look at Robbie! That's yes. a handsome young man. Yes, he is. That's a stud. Do you know how many handsome young men we are losing every day? Every day. Every day. And how old was Robbie when he passed away? He had just turned 23, and it's almost one year. Almost one year. Wow! And and you're coming up on that on the. Um, on the anniversary on of the his anniversary passing. anniversary of his passing, and which is also after Thanksgiving. So I really want to tell everybody, please be careful during these holiday seasons mm -hmm. because the dealers are out to make a lot of money this holiday season. And they're hurting children, like with all the teacups and and especially uh, wonderful angels like Robbie. And I want, I want to talk a little bit more about Robbie and his, his special gifts and how he affected the lives of others. I think you got another picture of Robbie right here okay. and, and a friend of his. Okay, and let's make laser like I'm sorry for the light coming yes. from the camera, but here we go right here. And we got Robbie standing right here and there's a young man in a wheelchair right is, here. That is that is Robbie and Khalid, Robbie's very best friend. Uh-huh. Um, since he was like five years old, we were neighbors. Mm -hmm. Khalid had um, MS. Okay. We, and Robbie carried this child. We took him on vacation. Robbie put him on his back, take him, teach him how to swim. Mm -hmm. Robbie Hodge was a giving, caring, loving person. Wait a minute, he put him on his back? Yes, he would. He would carry him up and down <laughs> any time. If somebody, if somebody was having, whether it was a party or anything, he was going to make sure that Khalid was invited. Okay, let me make sure and we're going to get this I closer. Love. There's Robbie and there's Khalid. And Robbie would pick Khalid up out of that chair and say, all right, yes. brother, we heading on, we finna go. Yes, and he would. took care of him. And uh, that, that's a showing of his character, yes. of his class, and, and also coming from his from great parents. Thank you, mom. <sighs> that That is, that's beautiful, that's but, beautiful. But that was actually, and it didn't even come from great parents. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Robbie was just a giving, caring, loving person because mm -hmm. I've had people after his death come up to me and, and tell me things that Robbie did. Mm -hmm. uh, Robbie, Robbie believed in one thing, he said, it's not about the things that you do that you brag about. Mm -hmm. It's about the things that you do that are great and you never say a word about. Wait a minute, wait a minute. This is huge. That's deep. Say that Rob one more time. Yeah, I, I, Wise words yes. from Robbie Hodge. One yeah. more and how old was he when he said this? Um, it's it's in. I've got four years worth of journals, and it was in one of his journals. Okay, a couple of years ago. And, and say that say that he, message one more time, please. Robbie said, um, "It's not about the wonderful things that you do mm -hmm. that you brag about mm -hmm. every day. Right. It's about the things that you do that are wonderful, but you never say a word about." Mm -hmm. So, after Robbie's death. Mm. You would not believe the amount of people that came to me and said, did you know your son saved my life? Wow. Did you know that your son, when they were bullying me at school, your son was the only one that would come talk to me? Wow. Did you know what? And and get this, I'm his mother. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, as you know, the usual 22-year-old kind of lazy. Yeah. <laughs> he never told me that he was doing things that were good. Mm -hmm. But the number of lives this child saved and mm -hmm. never said a word. The stories don't stop. Mm -hmm. People love this child. Mm -hmm. Well, I know, mean, they wow. did. It's unbelievable. I mean, there are counselors. I've had a counselor come up to me lately and say, you know that your son saved my daughter. Wow. He spent four hours talking her into getting help. So even if he struggled, mm -hmm. he went so far above and beyond to make sure it never happened to other kids. Let me, and, and I got to show this one more time. And I want to say this. I want to make sure everybody gets to see Robbie and make sure this light isn't showing. Because as parents, honestly, you never know the type of job you've done raising a kid until after they're grown and, and somebody is coming and t talking to you about them. And one thing I heard, you know, when, with Victor, when my son passed away in 2008, um, he was killed at work in an accident. 
you know, we heard so many stories, just like with Robbie, yeah. you know, Victor did this and Victor did that. We didn't even know. Right. And it's like, I felt blessed, even though I felt powerless because I couldn't save my son. But I also felt humbled and, and happy of the effect of that my son made in the lives of others, yes. the huge impact. And Robbie is one of those just young men that made such an impact. And also, and to get back to Realty for Rehab, of him, you know, kind of pushing you to do this, because that's what I want really, I want people to support Realty for Rehab and to really understand the importance of this. Okay, what did he say to you to really get you going with this before he passed away? Well, the week that he passed away, uh -huh. well, let, let me go back. Let me say four or five months prior to mm -hmm. him passing away. Mm -hmm. Because I've been waving my own flag for years. Mm -hmm. I go to events. I do whatever. Yeah. Um, I gave away a lot of my own money. Mm -hmm. almost went broke doing it. But mm -hmm. then I realized I can't do that now. You know, I couldn't continue to give away all my money and support three kids. Yeah. But, um, yeah, you got to take care of yeah, home. I, yeah, you got to take did, care of home first. Yeah, there, I mean, there were some issues. And so, um, but, so, that the week that Robbie died, I, I'm in the kitchen, and we had just put out an ad in the public. It was going out in public so that, mm -hmm. that week, and I'm calling Robbie in, and I'm like, Robbie, come here, look at the ad. And mm -hmm. I'm telling them that I've finally filled out the 501c3 mm -hmm. paperwork, and I'm like, Robbie, look. So you are a legit nonprofit. Yeah, I'm a legit nonprofit. A legit nonprofit. Legit <laughs> nonprofit. 501c3 Listen, and everything. That's it, important. It took me time to do that because I'm not going to do all that extra paperwork. I'm busy being a realtor and mm -hmm. a mom and, and taking care of the house. I wasn't going to do it unless mm -hmm. people started believing mm -hmm. and they did so um I'm, I'm looking at robbie and i said robbie are you going to help me run this thing or are you going to be the poster child what are you doing mm -hmm. and he's in the kitchen and he's grabbing a, a, a bowl for some cereal and he says mom it's going to be huge. Mm -hmm. God's got this. God's got this. And I turn around and I go, okay, what do you want? $20? Yeah. <laughs> what do you want, boy? You know, you know this, this child, he had no idea mm -hmm. those words because within seven days he was with God. And, mm -hmm. and Robbie Hodge was known around the world, actually, mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. one from one post. Um, so he said that, and yeah, seven he, days he, later he passed away. Yes, yes. And, and Robbie... Robbie was so very well connected with God. Mm -hmm. You have, um, I was looking earlier to find the letter that he had written to God mm -hmm. three months before his death and asking God what is his purpose, you know, his mission in life mm -hmm. because he liked to help people so much. Right. And, and God, I think, answered him because Robbie would ask questions to God, mm -hmm. write it down. He was OCD. Mm -hmm. He was very OCD, high anxiety as mm -hmm. well. But he would ask him, and when God would answer him, um, he wrote that down. And mm -hmm. so God said, Robbie, continue to do the things that you do to help people, mm -hmm. and I have a plan for you. Wow. And, and it's three months later, you know, mm -hmm. Robbie's in heaven with his father. Well, and you also, you have something right there next to you. And I want to see this right here. Yeah. This one? Yes. This right here. Robbie's guardian angel that he always had. I want you guys to see this. Now, when did he draw this picture? He drew that at Pinecrest Christian Academy when he was at Pinecrest. And drew a picture of his guardian angel. Wow. And you know what? The, 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 after his death, I mean... That was the first thing mm -hmm. that I found. I mean, that was a gift from God, mm -hmm. finding that picture, mm -hmm. because that was done way back. It mm -hmm. wasn't exactly sitting around in the house as mm -hmm. a, you know, and it wasn't in a frame. That was the first thing that I found, which gave me peace of mind, mm -hmm. knowing Robbie knew God, God knew Robbie. Wow, well, you know something, Jennifer, I am just, it's an honor to have you here on the show oh. and to, to be talking about a phenomenal young man as your son. And, and Pam, I hope listening to Jennifer's story um, 
has helped you uh, because I, un I understand that you got some things going on with your family as well and you said you know please read my letter and I hope this reaches people and businesses that will lend their services in helping families like mine save their loved ones well Realty for Rehab Wait, this, is, is this one will of, happen. Is, yeah. this, it, it will <laughs> happen, and, and it's going to happen with or without Jennifer Hodge, which is mm -hmm. so exciting because yeah. you got to remember, uh, um, I'm just me. Mm -hmm. But the idea mm -hmm. of being able to just ask your realtor, mm -hmm. honestly, ask them, say, will you do 33% if mm -hmm. I give you this listing? Yeah. Um, if they don't call me, my, I'm... I'm, my number's publicized. It's on billboards. It's mm -hmm. on, call me. I'll get the money. I'll, I'll help you. Matter of fact, how can folks contact you? Because you got you got, you got a website. You got uh, phone I, numbers. I do, and and really, um, Jennifer Bryant Hodge is uh -huh. it on Facebook right now. Jennifer Bryant. And Hodge. you have to kind of send me a message because I'm out of friend room and all these things. And because you got so many, you're so popular. It, 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 <laughs> well, it just it, everything just sort of blew up. Uh -huh. But. Um, you can send me a message and mm -hmm. Jennifer Hodge Realtor at Gmail. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm, gonna, I'm thinking after the first of this year, this is going to be all pulled together mm -hmm. um, because I'm noticing, and this makes me very happy, mm -hmm. at the National Association of Realtors Conference last week, mm -hmm. there was a, it said the Salvation Army mm -hmm. Real Estate for rehabilitation. Amen. Yeah, I mean, Amen. You and they're Amen. doing this. And and the most exciting part about it uh -huh. is um, I called mm -hmm. the National in Virginia, mm -hmm. the Salvation Army, uh -huh. and they said, I'm sorry, um, this is coming out of the Marietta office, mm -hmm. and there's an Alpharetta agent, and I haven't called her yet, but I am like so happy. People are listening. They're listening. Um, it's coming. Churches, churches, come on, you've been giving forever and uh -huh. ever. You've been every Everybody's lifeline. You're mm -hmm. running out of money. Right. You're running out of money. Choose your realtors. Make it happen. Make it happen. Make it happen. Uh, and please contact me when you start making it happen because my phone rings all day mm -hmm. long. People need help and they are dying, literally dying for help. Mm -hmm. Forsyth County, wake up, smell the coffee. Yeah. Uh, you know, the movie's on. The mm -hmm. movie's on. We yeah. are in full force attack by by uh, the dealers. Mm -hmm. And not too many people are talking about it, and that's why I am talking about it. Um, we are losing way too many children. Well, and, just to put this back in perspective, yeah, that, I mean, and I want to I show this one more time because we're going to wrap this up, but... This is an example of babies that are lost. And just like Pam said in her letter, it doesn't matter if they're coming from poor families, it doesn't matter if they're coming from wealthy families, it doesn't matter if they're white, it doesn't matter if they're black, it doesn't matter if, what. Well, it doesn't matter. These are babies that are dying, that need our help. And if we can simply do something, just simply in real estate, and Forsyth County does a lot of real estate. Yeah. And if you can just talk to your realtor and say, hey, I, I would like for you to be a part of this program, this Realty for Rehab, and you can connect with Jennifer Hodge and we can make this thing happen. And, and you know, do you have any, any last words of encouragement for Pam and anyone else right now that's, that's going through this? Because you and I both know the pain of losing a child. Yes, we do. Um, but any words of encouragement for, for her right now? Yes, well, it, Pam, and it, you, please contact me. Mm -hmm. uh, it, and he, you have my telephone number, so please call me, and, and I'll help you as much as I can and reach out. And it, it, a lot of it has to do with what your brother how he feels about it because a lot of times the family yes you want help but does he want help yeah so i i need to get a little bit more details on it but i would like to share one last thought uh, yes ma'am go ahead for north for north atlanta the first mm -hmm. six months of 2017 i did my reports mm -hmm. um through the fmls system mm -hmm. and that's what we pretty much all use right um, commissions paid out were 180 million dollars 180 million okay 
and you know I dream big mm -hmm. but one day if everybody really wants to clean up the community build what we need mm -hmm. and get the drugs out and help the people if everybody did it for one six-month period we would have had 59 million dollars wow. in revenues to help all of the people Wow. in North Atlanta and this is what I'm hoping every county in this country will start standing up and just make it wow. happen if anybody needs direction just call me and, and that and that makes it easy because I know a lot of the politicians are like well the county doesn't have money the state doesn't have money we don't have money to do this but if you was to do it through realty which is something simple, simple. the money be there you don't have to raise taxes on anybody the money is there the money is there it, 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 it can't it be is, any more simple. It's it's it, that was God's gift. Mm -hmm. Back to the listen, God gave us the land to begin with. Mm -hmm. It was free. Nobody made money off of it. Mm -hmm. Well, God needs that land back right now to help save His people. Mm -hmm. And these are great children that are dying. You need to look at it. You need to look at it. I mean, okay. they're all over the best colleges and. and, and just wonderful, great children. And businesses can be involved. Churches can 100%. be involved. You know, schools can get involved. You know, uh, community organizations can get involved. 100%. So this is something simple. So I'm going to put your information on the screen, and I want you guys to reach out to Jennifer Hodge. And I want to I want to tell you this, ma'am. Just from one parent to another parent, I appreciate the work that you have done. And when I see pictures right here of Robbie, that it rem Robbie is everyone's child. He is. Robbie is, is Victor, my son. Robbie is, is Pam's brother. Robbie is every one of these teacups. But Robbie is your son or your daughter at home right now. And I want, ma'am, I want to thank you for the incredible sacrifice and the work that you've done, your family has gone through tumultuous times, dark times. But ma'am, strongest of us always go through the worst of things Correct. so we can be the beacons and authority to speak on God's behalf about helping his people. And God, he puts us through these things to help others. And I thank you for your passion, for your commitment, and for your service, not only to Forsyth County and coming, but nationwide and people who are inspired all over the world to get something like this going. May God continue to bless you, ma'am, and the family you have. And may Robbie look down on his mom with a huge smile knowing that the work continues. And I want to give you a big, oh. big hug. Thank you so much. God bless you. God's God got this. this. God's That's got this. Said. That's what God's he said. God's got this. And God's I, got I, this. I live by it. Okay. God's got, it. God's got this. So, wrapping this up, if you got a question for me, YG Nightstorm, you can always reach me at YG Nightstorm, Nightstorm spelled with a Y, not an I, on Facebook, and also Nightstorm.com, N Y G H T S T O R M.com. And as always, we want to tell you, to keep on helping people, that's how you change lives. And ma'am, do you? I want to give you the last word, Miss Jennifer Hodge. Thank you all for caring. Thank you for your compassion. Mm -hmm. And let's turn the tides on addiction, and let's start really saving these kids. Let's not talk about it anymore. There's not anybody that's going to give us money. There's not a program out there that's going to come and save us. We are going to save ourselves, and we have the power to do it. Mm -hmm. If you have the the willingness mm -hmm. to ask your agent, mm -hmm. they will do it. Will I have it. realtors standing behind me, and I know for Scythe County, we have some of the absolute top dog, most caring, giving, loving realtors, because when realtors start asking me to come speak at their events, mm -hmm. that's a clue. There you we go. We care. That's the, that's the best compliment a realtor could give to Jennifer Hodge, mm -hmm. is inviting them to come speak when it might be cutting into their stuff, but they care. They care. We care. They so, care. Forsyth County, let's get it started. Let's lead the nation. Let's get this going. God bless you guys, and we'll see you next time. Peace.